Hey there, it's been a while. Welcome to a special edition of Game Tips and Tricks by ENG. My name is Ignacio and today I'm bringing you the first of a series of videos explaining how to create a fabrication parts database from scratch. In this first video we'll take a look at the Academy P interface. I will show you how to create a new database, how to create new services and how to manage its conditions. So, let's get to it! The first piece of advice I would give you when creating a new database is that you shouldn't overwrite the default Academy P database. You should not start working on this database. The safest choice is to duplicate it, and to do this, you have to find the file path and then copy paste the whole database. By doing so, you are creating a new database and having the original one unmodified. So, we are going to open Academy P in the version that we are going to work on Revit. Here, we find the database location in our computer. Imperial Content is a nice default database to start with. We are going to copy and paste it into a new location. Back on Academy P, we go to New, Navigate and select the path of the database that we have just duplicated. Make sure to never check on the Remember This Next Time box. If you check it every time you open Academy P, the last database you have opened will be automatically selected and you won't be able to choose another one. Finally, we just type the Academy P database name. Now, let's take a quick look into the Academy P interface and see what it offers. At the Academy P toolbar we can find some tools, mostly to be used on Academy P, and since we want to use fab parts on Revit, we won't waste much time on this now. The Service Deployable tab is where we can find all existing services that are the equivalent of Revit systems. The Edit Service button. We will see this button all around Academy P interface. Clicking here will allow us to edit the service. The Parts Pool is where we can see all the items loaded for our systems. Clicking on those will allow us to place the part on Academy P. Usually, we use these parts to test a new service on Academy P before loading the database to Revit. At the Service Group tabs, you can have different groups to organize your services better. For example, you can have within the same service different groups with different materials that can be organized by size, a group for accessories, a group for hangers, and so on. Alright. Now that we know the interface, we can make our first steps into creating a new service. To do so, we click the Edit Service button and then select New Service. There are two ways to create a new service, from the scratch or by using an existing template. Let's create a new service from the scratch. When you click on the New Service button, a dialog will pop up and we will select No, since we don't want to make a copy of an existing service. We are going to name the service type in the system abbreviation and the system group. All system created within the same group will be grouped together in the browser. I'll show you an example of this later. When creating a service for fat parts, we don't need to choose any colors, because those only will work on Academy P. It will have no use in Revit. Here, at the service template tab, we can create a new template. I name it with the manufacturer's material or name, or pick an existing one. If we do this, the service will now have all elements of this template, but since we are starting from scratch, we will create a new one. On the template specification, I recommend using mechanical and general piping, without taking into account if the service is a domestic trade or not. Or else we can use public health domestic water and vent, if you are talking about drain and vent systems. To add parts to the service, we simply have to search through a browser for the manufacturer and material and drag the button to the area below the service information. Let's fast forward until we have all we need. Awesome! Now our first service is complete. Here's another important lesson. Let's suppose that we can only use this material for diameters of less than 2 inches. If there are any sizes conditions, you can preset those at the bottom of the window by right-clicking it and creating a new condition. Keep in mind that you have to create a condition, so you will have to select it and then drag the part to a service for it to work. 
See how the user condition gets highlighted when I click on the part? Let's create a new condition and then add some parts with it to see how it changes. If we want to add parts with no restrictions again, we have to make sure to click on the unrestricted conditions before adding it. If you have assigned the condition incorrectly, stay calm, we don't need to delete it and drag it again. We can edit it by right clicking the button at the parts pool and going to button properties. Then we double click on the condition and we can choose the correct one. Great! Now that we have our system for waste pipes, we can create the venti system using this last as a new template, since those will be using the same manufacturer and material. We click on new service as we did before, but now we choose to create a copy of the previous service, and that's it. All you have to do is give a new name and abbreviation. As you can see, if you have one or more services with the same group name, those will be grouped together. Take in mind that duplicated services use the same service template. Editing one will automatically edit all others using that template. Finally, always make sure to click OK when you finish editing the service, or else the change will not be saved. Also, you have to keep in mind that when adding a button to a service, they will have that priority when you use the root and fill tool on Revit. Always make sure that if, for example, you add more than one elbow, the first one you add will be the most common one. You can add as first the button for the 90 long radius elbow and then the 90 short radius elbow, and so on. Well, that's it for this first video. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll show you how to create new groups and how to add hangers, accessories and insulations to a service. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Bean tips and tricks videos.